Hey, uh, Andy. I uh, hope everything's cool. Uh, when we were talking to Lance yesterday, he when he was talking about quarterbacks, he mentioned uh, that, you know, competition every position, but everyone sort of knows what Jalen did at the end of last season. Just how would you characterize uh, the state of that, you know, competition for QB1 right now? Well, uh, you know, that's one of the main things that spring is all about. When you think about spring football, you think about competition, you think about developing fundamentals and conceptual understanding. Um, and if you have competition in your quarterback room, everybody sees that the most important position is competitive, which allows them to understand and accept the competition in their room. Uh, I think it's really healthy right now. Jason and Jalen are both doing a fantastic job um, with, with what they're doing. Uh, ben Easters has been thrust into getting some more reps this spring, and he's actually done a really nice job, and I'm, I'm happy with him and how he's progressed. Coach Z's done a great job with all those guys, and so that competition in that room has been, been good, and it's healthy, and it's what we want our program to be about. We want every position in our program to have to compete to play. We don't want anyone to start by default. So we're lucky that we have two experienced quarterbacks coming back from last season, people who have taken meaningful reps, which just helps our football team. Yeah, with Jason and, and Jalen both, are, are there things that you're looking at specifically with them that you want each of them to improve upon? Well, I think, you know, you know, obviously there's always with any, you know, young man this age in college to physically develop, right? Okay, that'll happen in the offseason to mature emotionally and intellectually. Uh, we, we have asked and we put a lot of those, you know, leadership um, growth on those individuals and they've, they've risen to that occasion and done a good job with that. Um, so you think about those things that would, you would consider intangible, but on the field, you know, conceptual understanding to be more, maybe more of an anticipation, anticipating thrower, um, you know, to, to know when receivers are going to come open, doing a good job of giving guys a chance to make plays on the ball this spring as a thrower, um, you know, commanding the huddle are the kind of things that we're trying to really, you know, get those guys to understand. And then, then their importance and what they do within the run game and their understanding of how, uh, maybe their read or their check or whatever it might be to put us in a good play when we're running the football uh, are all things that we're trying to get done in the spring with them. Andy, one of the things Lance said yesterday was that Jalen just looks different. Um, what do you think he means by that? Well, I'm assuming that he means that he's physically developed. His shoulders have gotten a little broader and his chest got a little bit bigger maybe. <laughs> I'd like to think his smile's got a little bit nicer. Uh, I tease him with that, of course. Uh, but a lot of our guys have made strides and start to look the part, so to speak, right past the eyeball test. And he's done that. And so, uh, but, but he's, you know, he's developed physically for sure. And he's got a, perhaps a, a swagger or a confidence about him, you know, as how he ended last year. Uh, that's noticeable. Perhaps that's what I was going to ask. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's what I was going to ask you. Yeah. I mean, do you feel like the end of last year really does fuel a lot of that too for him and just knowing that he can, he has that and he can do that? Yeah, for sure. I and mean, I think what's important, and he, and he still has embodied the growth mindset that we want a lot of our players to embody in the sense that you could ask him right now, hey, what are some things you want to improve on? He's going to rattle off a couple of things for you. So he's definitely not content. He's not satisfied. And I think our program, one of the things we talked about, you know, and he embodies this is it's not good enough. What we did isn't good enough and it wasn't good enough. So we need to figure out how to elevate everything that we're doing as a program. And he he is carrying the torch of that. He's carrying that banner for sure uh, with what he's doing. But he's got he's gained confidence. He's got experience, and that's what's going to happen when you get get to get you know live reps like he did in the game. Um, and you can see that. But he still wants to grow, and that's what we're looking for in our players. Hey Andy, I got a question. You always hear this stuff about a they held back the offense, or they still got more to go. How much more do you guys have to install of what you want to do because you came in late? Or did you pretty much install a lot of what you wanted to do? Well, you know, I think one of the hardest things in the coaching profession is you have to be, a, to be able to predict the future a little bit. Meaning, what is your offense going to need to look like week five and week six? And what is it going to need to look like week 11 and week 12? Trying to maybe forecast injuries or matchups for opponents. So your offense, in my opinion, should always be evolving and growing. Um, you know, you have a, a, a big picture plan of things that you install and want to put in. It probably has less to do with the actual schemes that are installed and put in and have this spring and maybe have a greater understanding of the why of all those schemes. Those are some of the things that spring football will allow you to do, the conceptual understanding of the schemes that you're running, perhaps really diving into the why. And we know that repetition is the mother of learning. And if you only, if you're limited on how many reps you have to do that with young men, 
that's one of the first things that's probably going to be compromised. So it's not so much the scheme that you're doing because really the honesty guys, that stuff's pretty easy to do. The scheming is, I mean, you, heck we can just pop on some film and steal things from people, right? It's about, can you get your players to execute, to do those things? Can you get them trained to execute what you're asking them to do schematically? And then for them to understand, you know, conceptually, why are we doing these plays? So, I mean, you could say that things were held back, Right. OK. And they were, you know, maybe some situational things to some degree, but not to the point where you would be like, oh, my gosh, you know, next fall, we look totally different, brand new. And no, it's not that way at all. It's about getting our players to understand and execute at a high level what we're currently already doing. Yeah. And then you're coaching, obviously, the tight ends. You've got Tavita Noah added to the group. Just talk about it. it looks like there's a lot of guys on paper fighting for a job there. Well, we want to be a multiple offense, and that position allows you to do that. You know, it's one of the most multiple positions in football at every level. If you look at pro football, college football, high school football, um, the tight end is the position that needs to be able to play in the box and play out of the box, right? Otherwise, you're just a receiver or you're just a lineman if you can't do that. So uh, we want competition in that room. We wanted, you know, to, to add somebody who's a little bit older uh, to the group so that will allow us to be multiple and use those guys a lot of different ways. But, yeah, there's competition there, kind of like we talked about with the quarterback room. You know, we have some guys coming back. You know, I mean, heck, guys, we got banged up last year at that spot towards the end of the year, and you end up playing quite a few different guys. And so kind of what we talked about with the quarterback room, that's the same thing in the tight end room. You have a bunch of guys that have live game reps now, and it's awesome. It's healthy competition. It allows us to do a lot of different things, and they're all uh, really excited to learn and grow and really kind of diversify their talents for our football team. Yeah, last question for me. I was looking at Armage, Reed Adams, and just he's trimmed down, and you got a lot of guys back on the O-line. Just what's your early thoughts on the O-line? Well, you know, uh, you know, championship programs, and people are always going to talk about great quarterback play and skilled players and things like that, but at the end of the day, championship programs have one thing in common, it's where they have good line play on both sides of the ball. And I challenge our offensive line every year. Uh, they will allow our team to go as far as they go. And so they are the, they're the tone setters of an organization. I've seen that this spring. I think they, they understand that. I'll call it the, the cross to bear. You know what I mean? To have that pressure to say how well you do in protecting our quarterback and how well you do in generating movement and distortion up front in our run game directly affects all phases of our game, kicking game, defense, offense. Um, and I think they want that pressure and they understand that we, we kind of put those guys on a pedestal to be able to do that for us. And what, the things that we do schematically and how we want them to simplify and execute to be able to go out there and just play fast. Um, I've seen them want that, you know, you had mentioned Armage, you, uh, we talked about Earl Bostic and Mike Nowitzki and you see Michael Ford and Bryce Cable do are all guys, you know, that are kind of in that mix right now. And they are absolutely embracing that competition piece and they're embracing the, okay, I want that on my shoulders. I want to be able to come out and physically move somebody off the football. Um, but three practices in, our day was our first day with pads. There's obviously a, thing, a lot of things that we got to get better at, but, uh, you know, there's ups and downs in a practice like today, the first day you have pads on. And it was good for us to see to, you know, there was a moment we were down and we were able to get back up and that group had a lot to do with it. So I'm, I'm fired up with where they're going. We're looking to create some, a lot of depth at that position this spring as we go forward. Um, like I said, offensively, conceptual understanding of what we're doing, the why, and just allowing all those guys to come out and play really fast is really what we're trying to do. Hey, Andy. Um, last year when Jalen took over as quarterback, you still kind of found creative ways to get Jason involved. Do you see the same thing this year? If, if Jason is the backup, are you still going to try to get creative ways for him to get on the field? Yeah, I, I would say that we're always trying to put our best players in the field and get them footballs, whatever they are. There's, Jason has elite speed. You know, now we're still developing him as a quarterback, you know what I mean? And, and he's in that competition. So you have to be careful when you start, you know, you know, guys become a jack of all trades and a master of none that, that can become an issue where you're, you're not allowing them to develop in certain areas. Um, but we are open to do anything with any of our personnel, right? And heck, you guys saw throw a football to our left tackle last year. So that's what we felt necessary to do to win that game or try to win that game. We're going to do those sort of things. So, and, you know, he's got elite speed. He's done that. We'll do those sort of things with anybody if, it feel, if we feel like it's going to help us win a game. I just wondered, too, you guys got Kai and you got Sevi on. And, and what does that do for you guys? I guess, how do you utilize all of those guys? Uh, and, and I guess what was your pitch to them to say that they can help you guys? 
Well, uh, that's a good question. So you utilize them, you know, just like we would any other position. You know, you want, you know, typically that position are some of the most athletic guys that you have in your football team. Uh, all around athletic, right? In terms of power and speed combinations. Um, but use them just like you would be multiple tight ends or receivers, right? You try to put them in positions to be successful. You try to get a couple of them on the field at the same time. You, you understand that typically in football, if you want to be successful at running the football, you have to have a group of running backs that, like I've said to you before, I want you to be able to know three names, you know, three names that you feel like you comfortable you're saying a lot because they've had production on the field after a game. Um, so you want to have depth in that room. Okay. And that, that, that certainly was challenged at the end of last season. Um, and the pitch to have them come here, I think was more about just holistically getting them, you know, and a lot of players who joined our program to be part of building something, right. To be part of a change. And that takes a certain kind of mindset that takes a certain kind of, you know, uh, fortitude to say, you know, it's easy to maybe join someplace that's established, but if you want to be part of change and growth, uh, and I think, you know, explaining that to them of what we're going to do here in this program, but then talking about our ability to be multiple with the running back position, which we've been able to do in the past, you know, me and coach 10 years now together, we've been able to do those things in other stops we've been at. So for them to see that stuff on film, for them to talk about how we want them to be part of the change here at this university, uh, I think that would be tell you why they're the pitch, so to speak, for them to be here. Real quick, can you just give impressions of those two guys, Savion and Kai, what you've seen from them so far? Well, three practices in, I can tell you that they both have really uh, pretty good vision. They have some instinctual feel for, you know, our run schemes already in, in kind of seeing things and being able to, you know, hit the hole, so to speak, right? Um, you know, we haven't done any live tackling or anything like that yet, of course, but uh, when we get to that point to be able to see them and what they're able to do beyond what we call the block yardage. The block yardage, as we would define it, would be, you know, whatever the offensive line tight ends or receivers are blocking for you. Sometimes it might get be again, nothing. Sometimes it might be 15 yards because there's a giant hole. How, what are you doing beyond the block yardage? And you can't really evaluate that till you probably start getting some live reps, um, you know, which we'll get to this spring a little bit. But, I, but I've been pleased with them and their vision and what they've been able to do. And they're wanting to learn it and grow. Andy, with, with regard back to, to Jason, is there any consideration at this point of moving him elsewhere? I know you're, you're thin at QB right now, but is that a conversation that's come up? No, we haven't had that conversation. You know, I, uh, like, you know, I we have some growth that's going to occur at the receiver room right now. We haven't really talked about him at all today, uh, but that group has got a lot of competition. You know, Kwame has left and, um, you know, and he was actually out of practice today, so it was good to see him. But, you know, there's – there is a lot of competition at that room and they're embracing it and I'm excited for their growth. Um, so before you start kind of talking about moving guys around, you want to see how well you can develop what you currently have. And I'm excited about that room and the competition they have. Cause I think that they, uh, you know, I think they'll end up being, they'll surprise some people next year. That's what I think. That's what I hope to, to get out of that group. And, and to that point, you know, Lance had said yesterday that he doesn't want just one guy to replace Kwame. He wants a bunch of guys to step up. I mean, do you think that's practical? And do you think that, that there's enough to, to throw around to keep those guys happy? Yeah, I think that's practical, you know, to, to be able to go out there. And, you know, you know, as you kind of look at things, you want to be able to have a good what we call ball distribution where your best players are getting touches in different ways. And, you know, one of our spring objectives is to be able to really identify the limitations of individuals and then their abilities. And if we know that this young man can run this route the best or he's the best with – the ball in his hand after a short throw, then we want to get those guys in the field to be able to, to do that when we're playing games on Saturdays. So, um, yeah, definitely within the realm of what we're doing. Like I said, I think people are going to be surprised by the time we start playing games of what, where that group has come. Andy, speaking with the wide receiver room. One more question, it sounds like. Go ahead. Yeah, sorry. And I know Terrence is a new addition to the staff. Uh, just what's it been like working with him and you know having him in after Emmett goes? Uh, Coach T. Sam, as he likes to be called, Coach Samuel has been a great addition to the room. You know, he has uh, a lot of different experience and a lot of different offensive schemes, you know, at, at this level. And so he brings thoughts and ideas. And he's my observation, and certainly through the interview process and from, um, you know, him being here already, he's a great technician, you, you know, in terms of what he's going to teach guys. Um, and I think that when I'm talking about maybe the youth in that room, combined with his experience and his knowledge and the technician that he is, you're going to see a lot of growth from those guys. So it, it's been awesome to have him around. 
All right, thanks, everyone. Okay, hopefully we'll see you guys in person sometime in the near future. Thank you. Thanks, Andy.